Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I am going to finish off that service on the Beetle. Okay guys, so as you saw last week, I started the service and I got the, uh, the valves adjusted and the timing distributor all changed over and the timing sorted out. This week I've got to get in and uh, change all the fluids and uh, that means I have to start by warming it all up. So I'm going to take it for a quick drive. Now it's nice and warm, you can actually see here that the bolt has gone again. But it does look like the, um, the warm-up cam is working properly. So I'm going to put a new bolt on. This time, I'm going to put some blue thread locker on it so that it doesn't come out. Okay, so I've put that in and it, uh, I put it in until it was just touching the cam and then I gave it an extra quarter turn with some thread locker. So hopefully now it will actually not fall out, um, we'll see. Uh, but now it's nice and warm, it's time to dump the oil. So now I just need to undo this central nut here and uh, drain the oil out. Um, these style of uh, drain containers are such a great idea. Um, so basically it catches the oil and then it keeps it inside it so you don't actually run the risk of having a big tray full of oil that you're gonna slosh around and make a mess because as you may have seen in some other videos, I make a lot of mess. So uh, let's uh, drain this oil out and uh, see what we're dealing with. Now I've got this stuff out, I'm gonna go through and just have a quick look and see um, what it is. It looks, this oil is really, really gloopy. It can feel a little tiny bit of grit maybe in the bottom, but most of it just looks like sludge. It just looks like this oil has not been changed in a long, long, long time. So um, first things first is I'm just gonna give this a big clean up and um, yeah, and then see what we're left with, even, even here. You can see that the uh, the screen on this, because these V-dubs don't actually have a uh, conventional oil filter, they just have this sort of screen in the bottom and you can just see the amount of sludge that's built up on this. It's not it's not metallic grits, it's just it's just sludge. So um, time to clean it up. Now I've cleaned all this stuff up, um, I've had a look at my sump plate and um, what's quite common is that uh, people over tighten the, uh, the sump plates and then they leak because um, on this one there's actually a little bit of a, on, it's only on one of these uh, bolt holes there, there's, a, there's a high spot where somebody's over tightened it and it's, it's sort of puckered out and um, this was leaking and uh, I don't want it to leak anymore. So, I'm going to attempt now to try and fix that dent and just tap it back out again. All right, that took a fair bit more than I expected. Um, I found actually sitting the, uh, the ball or the ball paint hammer onto the top and then knocking on that was good. Um, I just wanted to try and do it without damaging the face too much, but I think I've got it reasonably flat now. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around lightly with the uh, with a razor blade and just get the residue of the old paper gaskets off and just see if I can get it just nice and neat and tidy and, uh, and clean so that when the next one goes on, it's not going to leak. I hope. All right, so with that all cleaned up, um, I'm ready to start looking at putting it all back together again. and. Um, as usual, I didn't get the, uh, the gasket kit uh, ordered in time, so I'm going to attempt to make some uh, out of this um, gasket material I've got. So using the old gaskets, I'm going to use them as a template 
draw around them, cut them out, and hopefully I can get a decent seal. If I can't, I'm gonna have to replace them and uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. All right, my gaskets are made up and I've put a layer of grease on both sides. And basically there's a paper gasket between this base plate, this screen, and then another one on top of the screen. So there's sort of uh, four layers here. Uh, so now I'm going to go through and put it all back together again. And you should generally replace all the copper washers when you do this. Um, that's recommended, they come as part of the kit. But I didn't get the kit, did I? So uh, I'm gonna have to use the copper washers again and hope that they work. Hopefully it doesn't leak. So now I've got these all loosely done up. I have to talk them up to spec and the torque spec is actually tiny. Um, it's actually just five foot pounds and I don't have a torque wrench that will get to that, but I have this adapter which goes onto any socket the lowest I can set it is seven and a half foot pounds, but it, it does read the torque setting out as I'm turning it. So I can just watch the screen and hopefully just sort of get it, get it to uh, five foot pounds and then stop. I'll demonstrate on this exhaust bolt here. Do you see as I put the pressure on, it sort of gives me a torque setting and then I take it off and it starts again. So I'll just torque it up to when I'm happy. Okay, and before we go too much further, I think it's time to get under here and uh, just uh, degrease it a little bit so that uh, when it leaks again, because it's going to leak again, I can uh, see where it's leaked from. So I forgot to turn the microphone on again, but the next job is to drain all the oil out of the gearbox. And before I go and undo the sump plug and drain all the oil out, I wanna make sure I can reach up on the side and undo the fill plug, because if I can't undo the fill plug and I've drained all the oil out, I can't get oil back in the gearbox again and I've got a car that doesn't work. So to get the gearbox oil up into the hole in the side of the gearbox, I've got a little hand pump and uh, I'll just fill the hand pump with oil and start pumping it in. This is a great angle. That's talked up to 15 foot pounds of torque. So now I need to get up uh, in the side here and with my pump and start pumping some oil in. And basically, um, you know you're full when it starts overflowing. Right, there we go. She's overflowing. And that means it's full. All right, now it's time to change over the oil and I'm not even gonna start on the endless internet debates on which oil's correct, synthetic or mineral or whatever. The main thing you just need to know as far as what I've researched on these old engines is it needs to have a, uh, a high zinc content because of the way these engines were designed and a lot of the modern oils don't necessarily have that so that's just one thing to think about but um all right time to uh top it up i'll just clean off my dipstick and uh, i think it takes about two and a half liters so let's start pouring oil All right, oil's filled up, but uh, it's pretty filthy in here. And as you can see, 
There's all these holes in the tin. There's bolts and stuff missing. And there's also, I've noticed that there's this big gap around here. The rubber seal that's supposed to be all the way around this edge has perished and disappeared. There's, uh, yeah, more holes. So that is something that apparently is really detrimental to these engines. They, uh, they run hot. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, that's uh, apparently to help duck the heat away from the engine. So there's something I'm gonna have to do. But uh, for starters, I'm just gonna try and clean some of this stuff up a little bit. Just make it a little bit tidier for now. And um, I think I will be tidying this engine bay up properly at a later date. Okay, and the last thing on my service is to replace the fuel filter. And um, I've had quite a few people mention to me, and I've read it a bit, um, that most do not like having the fuel filter in the engine bay like this, because if um, it gets old and the, uh, the plastic cracks or there's any leaks, it's just another way that fuel can leak into a hot engine bay and catch a whole bug on fire, and that's the end of it. So I'm going to attempt to remove the filter from here and put the filter in uh, closer to the fuel tank behind the front right tire. In the end, I had the wrong filter, so I just moved the fuel filter from the back to the front and, uh, and just hose clamped it in here. Uh, those clamps I had work quite well. Here's one. They're, just a, uh, they're just, a, just a clamp, they clamp on, and then these things slide down and lock on the, uh, the hoses to keep them from dripping. Great idea. And while I was there, I actually put a bushing over the top. So now I'm gonna slide that up to the top and uh, and protect that hole, potentially could rub away at the fuel hose and cut through it, which I don't like. So that bushing should prevent that. And then, um, yeah, I'll have to replace the fuel filter later. Yep, the bushing is sitting up there nicely. And uh, I just bought one of these bushing kits off of eBay. And uh, actually I've got a couple of them. And uh, they were really cheap and come in so handy, all these different size bushings. So whenever I need something, I just go in here. Universal one, fantastic, worth having in the garage. All right, and that is um, pretty much serviced, I think. And now I'll just put this wheel back on, get it back down on the ground and see how she is. And I almost forgot. Um, where I've removed the filter from here, the filter was between these two bits of hose, I just disconnect the uh, one end from the carby and just connect it directly up. And now there's no more filter in the engine bay. So um, some of you will be quite happy about that. Just take it for a spin around the block and see if she's good. It works great. So um, one last little thing I just want to try and tackle before I go, if I can, is um, the owner left me with this uh, window latch just to lock in this little quarter window. But um, obviously the reason he didn't change it is because um, it's riveted in, not uh, it's not screwed in. So um, I don't I don't have these this type of rivets that are in here. They look like they might be like sort of um, like the handheld bent over ones, but uh, I'm going to try uh, take this out and see if I can maybe pop rivet it in. Um, either way, we'll just we'll just give it a go. So uh, first things first, let's get this glass out and uh, see what we can do. Quick tip: don't drill towards your hand. It's really really stupid. And of course, it's not easy. It doesn't fit properly because this one's slightly longer. The holes don't line up perfectly. So. This one extends out this way a little bit further than the other one. Uh, just means I need to do a little bit of tweaking to get it fit. I've got the flat disc out on the grinder and ground off these uh, edges so that I can get into the uh, wedge area here a bit further and uh, beautiful.
Much better. That is a little job that has been annoying me. All these rubbers are completely perished, but at least it's a little bit more weather tight than it was, considering it lives outside and this window was sitting open the whole time. Another job down, and uh, I would make a terrible mechanic. I am really slow. That has taken me all day, and uh, I'm out of time. So that is, again, time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, after World War II, the heavily bombed Volkswagen factory was captured by the Americans and they handed it over to the British. The factory was going to be dismantled and shipped to Britain, but luckily no manufacturers wanted it. The first job in reinstating the factory was to remove an unexploded bomb. And the bomb, had it exploded, would have damaged vital production equipment and potentially ended the Beetle as we know it right then. As it was, British Army officer Major Ivan Hurst convinced the British government to order 20,000 cars and by 1946 they were producing 1,000 Type 1 military beetles a month. Alright guys, that was a very mucky day and uh, as I said I probably wouldn't make a great mechanic because I'm really slow at uh, doing that but uh, having to make the gaskets and all the rest of it it's not that great, but at least now it's actually in a state where Mrs. Jeff can potentially drive it to work. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, guys, as always, um, please like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. Right. Yes, Mr. Bush, I I don't know what I'm saying. I know that's right. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh my god. No, they handed over the British. They had that. <laughs>